Hi, it's Paul from Hobby Link International. Don't forget the subscribe button's down there somewhere. Oh, you need to click on that and also the bell if you want to get notified of for future videos. And today we're going to have a look at a kit from Clear Prop. It's one that we sell in the shop. This one's the early version of the Sea Sprite in 172nd. Okay, today we're going to have a look inside the box of this is the clear prop C Sprite UH2 A and B, the earlier version with a single engine. Uh, 172nd advanced kit, which means there's some photo etching here as well. And kit number 72002. So what have we got? So on the side here looks like uh, painting options, um, all US Navy, one bright one. And the other ones look seem to be dark blue. Um, 92 plastic parts, 68, 68 photo etch parts. Um, so this is then probably just over 250, about 10 inches front to back, if you include the rotor. Nothing on the ends much. So I'll take that out. The usual, basically a solid cardboard box with just a thin plastic a thin cardboard cover at the top. Open that up. Take all this out. Uh, photo etch, decals, the plastic parts, the instructions. We'll have a closer look at these in a minute, but the usual glossy paper, uh, mostly black and white, a bit of colour where you need it. They're nice and usually nice and clear. We'll have a close up look at these anyway. Um, was that 22 steps? Basically 14 pages. And then the colour guides, colours called out Mr. Colour, MIG, and that's those. And then the, that's a bright one. Then the other options, I think the next release is going to be the Sky Shark in 148th scale. It's uh, coming soon. So, let's have a look at some of the plastic first. Obviously resealable bags. And we got one, two, three, four sprues. I'm starting with this one. Uh, looks like, what have we got? This is the engine cowling gearbox, basically sits on top. Nice res riveting detail, recessed panel lines I can feel with my fingers, but not under my thumbs. Uh, looks like overhead instrument panel. Raised detail, I can feel all the buttons there. Now this looks like the underneath of the main fuselage. Again, lots of really nice detail. A couple of raised panels there, look like a bit like aerials. And this is the top of the fuselage, and these two pieces will slot together and go on here. So now that's pretty neat. That looks like the tail, these two pieces. Flooring detail for inside the fuselage. It's like a rough pattern there. Here we have four rotor blades. It's a bit like the nose of the aircraft. Again, lots of nice detail. You can tell there's a leading edge on the metal leading edge on the blades. Those are the seats. Seats seem pretty basic. So that's an instrument panel, two instrument panels, looks like one's a decal. One's for maybe putting a decal on and one's for painting it should you want to. Or photo etch, photo etch and decal, we'll see. That's tail rotor, interior seating, flying controls, 
rails, undercarriage, uh, the wheels, undercarriage leg. Quite a fine detail on there. You can see individual nuts and bolts inside the wheel. Tail rotor, looks like undercarriage again. Again, lots of really small parts in there, that's pretty neat. And what we've got on the interior, we've got, looks like there's interior detail on the cabin walls. And then there's clean, riveting detail on the outside, panel lines, cockpit floor perhaps, or perhaps a roof. Oh, it looks like the cockpit floor, cockpit and the uh, cabin. So those look pretty neat, some nice details on there. Let's have a look at these. So, clear parts. It's like some pretty big clear parts where you just put the plastic over, uh, sorry, masking over the parts that are going to stay clear and paint the other parts. Here we have two decal sheets, there's a small photo sheet there. Another photo edge sheet there. Two pretty nice sized decal sheets. Just looking at this one, you can see there's not much not much backing film on them. Look at this one super super backing film. If it wants to come out, there we go. Okay, back in film. Now, as I suspected, it's really close to the lettering and the numbers, just enough to hold them all together. Nothing extends beyond. There's your decal photo edge sheet. Sorry, decal instrument panel or instrument panels. There's the overhead one as well. So, all pretty neat. Um, we'll have a close up look at the instructions and also a close up look at some of the parts. The Kamen SH-2 Sea Sprite is a ship based helicopter. It's been typically used as a compact and fast moving helicopter for utility and anti-submarine warfare missions. Development of the Sea Sprite had been initiated in the late 1950s and in late 1957 Kamen was awarded a contract for the construction of four prototypes and an initial batch of 12 production helicopters. In 1962, the initial UHT model commenced its operational service with the US Navy, but the Navy quickly determined that the helicopter's capabilities were greatly restricted by its single engine. Beginning in 1968, the Navy's remaining UH-2As and Bs were extensively remanufactured, including the replacement of their original single engine with a more powerful twin engine. Uh, and those became the UH-2C, which is not the subject of this kit. So I'll stop there. I'm not aware of anybody making an earlier version of Sea Sprite in this scale before. This is the UH-2A slash B. Um, the other people who made Sea Sprites in this scale basically are Airfix, uh, where their kits date back to the 80s, and Fujimi, who, whose moulds date back to the 70s. Um, just as an added thing, uh, Clearprop are going to bring out a UH-2C in the near future. They've got a part number for the kit and everything, so that's on its way as well. So in the box, there's 92 plastic parts, 68 photo etch parts, two decal sheets, and a full colour 20-page glossy instruction sheet. And the kit is built in 22 steps over 12 pages. Now I'll go through the instructions, just covering a page at a time. So, the first page uh, has the first two steps, starts off with the uh, pilot seats. Um, fairly basic piece of plastic uh, for the seat, but then we add in uh, PE seat belts and also some photo edge detail on the sides. So it should look okay once it's all in there. And then down to the second step, starting with the cabin floor, and we're fitting basically the cockpit parts to the front of the cabin floor. Um, instrument panel is uh, her, the instruments are shown by decals same with the center console flying controls go in here as well page two continuing finishing off the cockpit we install the pilot seats and also the 
the rear walls of the cockpit or the forward walls of the cabin, whichever you want to put it. Um, and then moving down at step four, we install the uh, passenger seats in the back of the cabin and another few small details. Then over the page to step five, um, I think we're actually literally adding two parts here, a um, couple of pieces of photo etch. Then we go down to step six, where assembly, where I'm putting together the rest of the cabin um, walls at the back and front and then the overhead instrument panel attaches to the roof well basically to the uh, the cockpit wall at the back there um, I take a bit of uh, finagling hold it in place while it's glued um, and then uh, my first thought is also making sure that should you say the when the canopy goes on it actually mates up with the back of the overhead instrument panel and um, just to see how that works out and over the page on to step seven uh, this one's um, basically building the undercarriage bays underneath the main cabin and then down to step eight you'll need a one millimeter drill to drill four holes in what's going to be the bottom of the fuselage and then onto the next page which is just step nine um, Attaching, make a building the fuselage around the cabin. There's four basically parts to this rather than fuselage halves. There's fuselage top, bottom, bottom port, and starboard. And you've got a couple of clear parts to go in here as well. Um, you can also get um, an optional masking set for this kit as well. And with the amount of glass in the front canopy, it might come in useful. Um, the other thing I with kits that go together like this my thought is also you've got about double the seams that um, you'd have with just a left and right fuselage half so you have to pay a bit of attention to what's going on and on to the next page starting with step 10 we're putting should say a representation of the engine inside the starboard side of the cowling you can see there's um, fan detail on the air intake the uh, the exhaust is made of two halves so you'll have to do some careful work to make sure the seam is invisible at least on the on the parts outside the cowling um, as an option you can get a resin exhaust for this but it doesn't come in the kit it's an optional extra and then move down to step 11 put the two cowling halves together and then down to step 12 put together the main undercarriage legs um, basically what there's five parts of plastic and then a few bits of photo edge hanging around as well and then step 13 is putting the winch together the next page is just step 14 and here basically we're putting the, the aircraft together really um, we've got the fuselage that we've already built we put the cowling we've already made so put that on top um, the tail is made of two parts left and right put those in there looks like there's a a photo etch grill to go in there as well. Uh, a couple of parts go together to form a cover for the um, the shaft that goes to uh, to the tail. And no ca cockpit canopy goes on. Two part nose and another few panels on the side as well. As I said before, you can get um, um, a masking set for this kit. Um, and you also have to be careful here with. Remember, I was talking about the uh, the overhead instrument panel in the cockpit and making sure it lines up with the canopy when it goes on. And on the next page, step 15, basically working on the starboard side of the aircraft. Stabilizer goes on, it's very small parts, uh, cabin door, right hand undercarriage leg, um, or not, not too much really. And then in step 16, we're working on the port side of the fuselage stabilizer, cockpit and canopy doors, an undercarriage leg and quite a few little uh, photo etch parts go on on this step as well. Now onto step 17 and we're working underneath the aircraft adding air wheels by the looks of it, mostly plastic, some photo etch at the tail wheel and we start doing the first bits of working on the rotor head um, basically two part um, central hub of the rotor head, top and bottom and put those together. And on to the almost at the end, uh, we start here. We build the main uh, the main rotor um, blades. You've started with the hub from the previous step, and it looks like there's actually quite a lot of small photo etch parts that go into this. Um, handily, they've 
label them as step one, step two, and step three to make sure you get things done in the right order. But you are going to need some tweezers and some uh, magnifying glasses to get all these parts in place and everything everything looking right. But it should look very nice when it's when it's finally finished with all the photo etch that's going to be in there. And then on this page, you also I believe this is um, flotation devices at the bottom, and then you just add another bit of photo etch to the tail rotor. And then on page 12, the last page, um, quite simple, attach the main rotor, attach the tail rotor, flotation devices, and windscreen wipers, and that's your model complete. Okay, paints and decals. Um, paints are called out by Mr. Colour and MIG reference numbers, and they're also named. You get four um, painting options. First two are an in overall engine grey. Third one is a bright red orange, and the fourth one is mostly engine grey with some a bit of bright orange on it. Um, you get two decal sheets, one with all the stencils on it, one with the bigger parts on it. So and they look quite nice. The backing film is minimal in all the places you'd expect it to be. And then you get uh, three stencil guides: one for the two engine grey aircraft one for the uh, the bright orange one and another one for the grey the grey one with a bit of orange all in all they should look quite nice uh, there's plenty there everything seems very nicely uh, labelled and indicated and uh, if you do the orange one you'll end up with something that looks really bright so it looks good so an overall conclusion it's obviously the only um, early sea sprite in this scale that exists it's modern, nice detail, um, plenty of photo etch to go in as well, so you'll end up with something that looks quite nice. For me personally, a couple of fiddly bits, the fuselage being made out of four parts, top, bottom, uh, left and right, a few extra bits to watch out for there. Um, other than that, everything should go together okay. Um, there's alignment pins in the uh, fuselage halves, so things should line up quite nicely. You end up with something that looks quite nice, especially the bright orange version. Um, all in all, should do well for Clear Pop. I'm looking forward to um, them releasing the later versions that come along. They've already s said there's going to be a 2C version, and that's the twin engine versions, and it's easy to go from there right up to the latest versions.